everybody, Ace Channel Liam here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome back to a brand new episode of a brand new series of Metromania. For those new to Metromania, the concept is really simple. It's a metronome battle tournament. Like, what's not to get? Now, the previous seven seasons of Metromania have seen a single Pokemon work its way up through the heat, through the quarterfinals, through the semifinals, and onto the final to be named Metromania champion. But this season, we're doing things slightly differently. Instead of it being 16 individual Pokemon this time, we're having 16 teams of iconic Pokemon pairs or at least pairs that are in Sword and Shield. These teams consist of things like version exclusive Pokemon, iconic counterpart pairs, branched evolutions, even a couple of gender differences, and even a couple of rivals thrown in there. So if you're excited for the new season of Metromania, make sure you hit the like button. This is the first episode of a new season, so let's go for 2,500 likes on this video. If we can do it with your help, that'd be amazing and help out this season a lot. And of course, hit the subscribe button if you're new, so you never miss an episode of what is gonna be a massively unpredictable season. And as always, use code ACE to save yourself some money on G Fuel. And I've made a mistake because I picked my G Fuel of the day to be Green Apple on a video where I use a green screen. So this, when this gets edited, this is probably going to go wrong. But regardless, use code ACE because G Fuel's amazing. And I genuinely believe that because I love G Fuel and I wouldn't let them sponsor me if I didn't appreciate their product. But with all the waffle out the way, I know what you guys want to see, so let's take our first look at those all-important Season 8 brackets. And here they are. Look at these beautiful teams. We've got some counterpart Pokemon. We've got some branched evolution Pokemon. We've got Pokemon rivals like Heatmore and Durant. We've got different forms of different Pokemon like Toxicity and Meowstic. There's so many cool options in this series. I think we've got a great doubles tournament coming up. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. So let's get things underway as Soul Rock and Lunatone are going to take on Cofagrigus and Runerigus. And here we are. It's the first round of the first heat of Metromania Season 8. A Soul Rock and Lunatone look to take down Cofagrigus and Runerigus. What a beautiful season this is going to be. And I really like the Pokemon Home Sprites because they make everything nice and uniform. All the artwork's the same. It's the Sugimori artwork, but all in 3D. That Sacred Sword is not going to affect Runerigus, though. Sorry, Soul Rock. Lunatone is going to follow up with Dig, though, which will protect it under the ground unless someone decides to use Earthquake or something. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It. Although Lunatone has Levitate, so Earthquake wouldn't affect it. Does it does it not affect Levitate Pokemon while they're underground, though? I'm not sure. That Frenzy Plant does miss from uh, Rune Regus over to Cofagrigus, who goes for Yawn onto Soul Rock. So Soul Rock is going to fall asleep on the next turn. So it's got one more opportunity to get an attack off before it's going to fall asleep because of that yawn from Cofagrigus there. We know that Lunatone is going to dig on this turn as well. So here's Soul Rock firing off a double hit, which doesn't affect Cofagrigus because of the ghost typing. That ghost typing is going to pay dividends. There's the dig dealing a little bit of chip damage from uh, Lunatone onto Runerigus. But now Runerigus now has Levitate and um, uh, the Wandering Spirit ability now goes to Lunatone. Uh, which means it no longer has Levitate. Here's a super effective crunch, though, from Rune Regus onto Soul Rock for huge damage there. That's not a position Soul Rock wants to be in right now. So over to Cofagrigus. What will Cofagrigus do here? It's going to go for Rock Wrecker. That will be resisted, but if you're going to go for a Rock type move that's resisted by Soul Rock or Lunatone, you want to use one of the most powerful ones. Huge damage there from that Rock Wrecker onto Soul Rock. Soul Rock falls asleep because of the Yawn. And of course, next turn, Cofagrigus will have to recharge, though. So do bear that in mind. Soul Rock, of course fast asleep thanks to that yawn from Cofagrigus over to Lunatone to try and follow up. What's he going to do here? Lunatone is going to go for Reversal, which doesn't affect the ghost type. Cofagrigus or Runerigus, mate, the ghost typing is so OP in Metronome Battles. Here's Phantom Force, though, which when it hits will be a stab move and protects Runerigus from further harm on the next turn. Cofagrigus needs to recharge, so no damage to Solrock or Lunatone, but a super effective stab Phantom Force is going to happen on the next turn. Solrock is fast asleep right now. It's over to Lunatone to try and do something here. Gonna go for Dynamic Punch. Doesn't affect Gothagrigus or Runerigus. But here's the Phantom Force taking Lunatone down to a single hit point from full HP. Gets uh, Lunatone, get, Lunatone gets Levitate back, but a, a Wandering Spirit goes back to Rune Regus, but I think the damage is done right there. Cofagrigus is going to go for X-Scissor. Um, that is going to land on Soul Rock for some super effective damage. So down goes Soul Rock. We're left with just Lunatone, who's on a single hit point in this first round. Could Lunatone claw it back if it could heal itself with maybe, I don't know, a Roost or 
moonlight or morning sun, something like that. What's Lunatone gonna do here? Because its decision here may affect this battle. Gonna go for stored power, which will deal some damage. And it is technically stabbed, but not a lot of damage there at all on Runerigus. Now it's over to Kofagrigus, who can literally do any move right here, aside from like false swipe. Goes for synthesis with its HP fall. That leaves an opening for Lunatone, but Runerigus still has to move right now. And it's gonna go for throw chop, which is super effective. Little bit of overkill. There it is. Down goes Lunatone. And Soul Rock and Lunatone have lost round one. Round one goes to Kofagrigus and Runerigus. Now it's up to Soul Rock and Lunatone to try and claw things back. If they want to go to the quarterfinals, they have to get past this first heat. And they still have an opportunity because a 2-1 victory will still put them in that quarterfinal, but they need to work their hardest to get there. Here's a Leaf Storm though from Lunatone. Which of the Pokemon is it on? It's on Kofagrigus. That would have been super effective on Runerigus and maybe would have done absolutely enormous damage. Down goes the special attack, of course, of Lunatone. Now we're over to Soul Rock, who is going to go for Fire Punch. Onto which Pokemon? Onto the Kofagrigus right there. Bringing it down to less than half its max HP. But now it loses Levitate and gains Kofagrigus' Mummy ability. And of course, there's no going back from there. That Levitate will never get back to um, Soul Rock there. Here's another super effective Throat Chop from Kofagrigus onto Soul Rock for a good chunk of damage there. My word. Now it's over to Rune Regus. What will it do here? What's on its mind? It's going to go for Multi Attack, which I believe just stays as a normal type move if you're not holding a, a Memory Drive. So that's not going to be very effective on Soul Rock there. Very lucky for Soul Rock. But of course now Mummy gets rid of Wandering Spirit from, um, from Rune Regus there. So now the only Pokemon that doesn't have Mummy on this field is Lunatone. What will Lunatone do here as it starts its next turn? What's it going to do? It's going to go for Skill Swap, which is a very strange play. So it's going to take Mummy from... Rune Regus and get rid of its own Levitate. I don't know how wise that was because now you don't have that immunity to ground type moves, but sure, you do you, boo. I'm sure it's going to work. Here's Soul Rock, though, who is going to go for Outrage. So that is going to happen over multiple turns here. So the Outrage is going to deal a nice little bit of chip damage there. Not a lot of damage from Soul Rock onto Kofagrigus there, but it's still damaged nonetheless. Rune Regus is going for Mind Reader. It wants to make sure whatever attack it uses next is definitely going to land on Soul Rock there, so Soul Rock needs to be careful. Over to Kofagrigus. What will it do? It's going to go for Yawn, which it did in the previous battle. Onto Soul Rock once again. This was Soul Rock and Lunatone's undoing in the previous battle because Soul Rock ended up fast asleep. So that's a great play there by Kofagrigus. Basically going for that same strategy again because no one ever expects you to do the same twice. Here's Outrage though from Soul Soul Rock onto Kofagrigus, taking it down. Fantastic outrage there by Soul Rock. Of course, Soul Rock is about to fall asleep because of that yawn. Here's Lunatone, though, who is going to go for Psycho Cut onto the uh, Rune Regus there. And of course, it's not going to get the Mummy ability because it already has the Mummy ability. This is really weird. Rune Regus is going to go for Vital Throw, though, which will be neutral on Lunatone there for a nice chunk of damage there. Of course, gaining the mummy ability, so no more levitate for Rune Regus. Everybody on the field now has the mummy ability, which is basically completely useless, apart from it gets rid of your own ability. So now it is time. Soul Rock and Lunatone versus Rune Regus. Kofagrigus is out of the picture in this battle right now. Lunatone starting things off on the next turn and is going to go for Muddy Water, which will be super effective and, of course, has a chance to lower the accuracy of Rune Regus. This does a small bit of damage there, not as much damage as you would have expected onto Rune Regus, but does get the accuracy drop. Now that's important, that is going to benefit Soul Rock and Lunatone going forward. If Rune Regus can't hit you, it means that it's going to waste a lot of opportunities and give you more opportunities to deal out punishment. Neutral Mach Punch there to Lunatone, does a nice amount of damage though onto Lunatone. Chip damage is better than no damage after all. Soul Rock is awake once again. Going for that Metronome. What will it choose here? Goes for Mean Luck, which is a waste of a turn because um, it, A, it doesn't affect Rune Regus. And B, uh, you can't escape anyway. Here's a Slam, which again doesn't affect Rune Regus. Lots of missed opportunities there from Lunatone. Now Rune Regus gets a chance to retaliate. Going for Aurora Beam, which will be resisted by the Rock-type Pokemon Lunatone. But of course, it's still a nice chunk of damage there. Critical hit as well. Oh, it's not neutral. Ice is not... Wait. Yeah, it is neutral. I got so confused just then. Ice is not resisted by Rock, which I always thought it was. It's just that Rock is super effective against Ice. Never mind. Here's a Draco Meteor, though, from Soul Rock onto Rune Regus right there. That should deal some hefty damage. Here we see the hit, and it's going to do a nice chunk of damage there, but it does drop the special attack stat. 
of the uh, Solrock there by two stages. I think both Solrock and Lunatone now are both at minus two uh, special attack here. Here's a Giga Drain. Again, minus two special attack. So it's going to do super effective damage onto Rune Regis more than I thought it would do. And it is going to restore Lunatone's HP a little bit. That explains why that Muddy Water earlier was a, a little bit lackluster. It's because of the, the special attack drop on that Lunatone. Rune Regis is going to retaliate with Aromatherapy though, even though there are no status conditions on its side of the field. So that is a fail. Solrock and Lunatone are in a very good position right now with Rune Regus on the ropes. What are they going to do? Lunatone is ready and raring to go, and it's going to go for Incinerate. But how much damage is this going to do? Is it enough? It doesn't quite take down Rune Regus there and doesn't get the burn either. So it's over to Solrock, who is going to go for Thrash, but that doesn't affect Rune Regus. So once again, Rune Regus has an opening. It has an opportunity, and it's going to go for Rock Throw which is avoided by Solrock. There you go. There's a testament to that muddy water accuracy drop from earlier. Now Solrock sees an opening. What is on its mind? It's scowling. It's going to go for Sweet Kiss, which is going to land. And of course, that is going to confuse Rune Regus there. Give it a chance of hitting itself, which of course it does not want to happen. But this may be over anyway because of the next move, depending on what Lunatone chooses to do. Lunatone is going to go for Boom Burst. That doesn't affect Rune Regus, but will do some not very effective damage to Solrock. So not the smart his play there. Little bit damage. Solrock is down into the yellow. Rune Regus is confused. Is it going to be able to shake it off? It doesn't. And it knocks itself out. So now it's 1-1. One, one. Solrock and Lunatone 1. Coffer Regus and Rune Regus 1. Whoever wins this is our first quarter finalist in Season 8 of Metro Mania in the teams tournament. This is going to be loads of fun. I can already tell because there's so many different Pokemon bringing so many different abilities to the table. Uh, not necessarily Solrock and Lunatone with the a drill pick there from Solrock onto Rune Regus is going to swap uh, Levitate for Wandering Spirit because that's the way Wandering Spirit works. Works like skill swap. But uh, I know Solrock and Lunatone, as I was saying, they both have Levitate. But things like Gallade and Gardevoir bring, bring their own individual abilities. Here's an Aerial Ace from Lunatone. Yes, I pronounced Gardevoir really weird then. I don't know what happened, but these things happen. There is Mummy removing Lunatone's Levitate after that little bit of chip damage onto Copper Regus. Over to Rune Regus though with Sinister Intentions, I'm sure. Goes for Scold, absolutely Sinister Intentions. Onto Lunatone there for a huge chunk of damage. At least a quarter of Lunatone's HP, I reckon. Doesn't get the burn though, that's unfortunate for Rune Regus. Over to Copper Regus for a Flail, which will be not very effective. Onto Solrock and not much damage at all, of course, because Copper Regus has a lot of HP, but does get rid of that Wandering Spirit and replaces it with Mummy. So no more Levitate for Solrock there. Uh, what's going to happen next? I have absolutely no idea. Lunatone, what's on your mind, good sir? What are you going to do? Going to go for Thundershock. It doesn't affect Rune Regus because of that ground typing. Very unfortunate. If you go for electric attacks, you've got to focus on Coffer Grigus. Here's a spark from... There we go. Once again, doesn't affect Rune Regus. Rune Regus with immunity to ground... Uh, sorry, immunity to electric, fighting, and normal type moves. That's a beautiful trio of immunities to have in a Metromania. That Grudge, let's see if that Grudge comes into effect later on. Coffer Grigus going for Bolt Strike. This will affect Solrock or Lunatone, whoever it's on right there. It's going to be on Solrock, and it's going to do a nice chunk of damage there as we see Coffer Grigus come back down. Of course, contact was made, so uh, Mummy is going to get swapped there onto, uh, onto Solrock. No more. No more Wandering Spirit. I believe. I'm so confused about one, when you hit a Wandering Spirit Pokemon with Mummy, but I'm sure you'll explain it in the comments. Here we see Reversal, which won't affect any of these Ghost-type Pokemon, over to Lunatone to try and follow up on its partner's mistake. Lunatone is going to go for Razor Shell, which if it's used on Runarigas would be super effective, which it is. My word, that was a decent chunk of damage, and we also get the defense drop, which could be a problem for Rune Regus. That could be the opening that Lunatone and Solrock need. Here's Slam, which won't be very effective from Coffer Grigus, so it means that Solrock and Lunatone remain in this competition that little bit longer. They now have an opening, although Rune Regus still has to move. Let's not count out Rune Regus right now, who's going to go for Frenzy Plant, which will be super effective on which Pokemon, though? It's going to do huge damage to Solrock. Doesn't quite take it down, though. Leaves Solrock with five hit points left. My word, Solrock is in danger, but of course Solrock and Lunatone are the faster Pokemon on the field, so they do get to move first, but they need to go on the offense right now. We see Dragon Breath from Solrock onto Coffer Grigus right there, I believe, and that is a nice chunk of damage, but they need a lot more than that. It does get the paralysis, though, which could help them out going forward. Lunatone needs a miracle. It needs to do something to make its team stay in this competition. It goes for Surf. That's going to hit Solrock for super effective damage, though, as well as Rune Regus, and do neutral damage to 
Kofa Grigas. Down goes Solrock. Rune Regus is on the ropes, but Kofa Grigas is laughing right now. It, it's definitely in a strong position is Kofa Grigas right now. What's he going to do here? Going to go for Drill Peck, which won't be very effective on Lunatone, though. So not very effective damage there, but Lunatone still got a decent amount of HP right there. Of course, Rune Regus couldn't do anything this turn because the Frenzy Plant from the previous turn needed recharging. Now we see Lunatone getting ready with that metronome. What's it going to do here? Going to go for Purify. That will fail in this metronome battle. Over to Rune Regus. What's on its mind here? Going to go for Shadow Claw, which is stab and super effective. How much damage is it going to do to Lunatone? It absolutely takes it out. We have our first quarter finalists in the form of Koffer Grigus and Rune Regus. Well done to these two teams. They've absolutely bossed it. They're going to be scary going forward. And what a way to open up Metromania. What a first heat. It was back and forth. There were some big old power moves in there. And it was just an absolute blessing to be able to watch that. I feel bad for Soul Rock and Lunatone who tried their hardest. But I tell you what. Kofagrigus and Runerigus look like they're going to be very difficult challenges going forward. I don't want to play favorites, but I feel like they've got a good chance of going all the way because of things like Mummy and Wandering Spirit removing abilities left, right, and center. And just their combination of strength and power and just, I, I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to go far, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please tell me which team you think is going to go all the way. And of course, don't forget to tune in next week as Glalie and Frostlass are going to be taking on Toxtricity Amped Form and Toxtricity Low Key Form. So that'll do it for the first episode of Season 8 of Metromania. If you enjoyed it and you're excited for the series, hit the like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Of course, share this video with a friend. If you'd like to support the channel like these lovely people down here, do pledge to my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Ace Train Liam and save yourself some money on G Fuel. Use code ACE. But until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.